in this example, we have a rectangular loop of wire in a constant magnetic field. We know the mass per unit length of this loop is 20.0 grams per meter. We know uh, the, well, let's, let's make sure, let's get a visual here so we can figure out what's going on. So we have a rectangular loop of wire in which we have a current. This rectangular loop of wire is organized, it is going to look like this, and it is basically, it is suspended by this end of the wire, and it's in a constant magnetic field, which is holding it at an angle something like this. So this piece is, it's basically hinged right here, and, and it can rotate like this around this axis, and there is a magnetic field going this direction, and a current going through this wire, which is holding it at an angle, something like this. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry to sure. This is for Nick. Adam Movich! That's for you. Sorry to It's okay. <laughs> so, we have, this is going to be the front view, this is going to be the top view. I'll make sure we understand specifically what's going on here. So we have, the, the front view looks like this. All we can see from the front view is this part of the wire. The top view would look like a plane like this. So just from the top, it would look like this. And this rectangular loop is hinged right here. And this is the top view. And this is the hinge right there. All right. Now. We have current, or we, well, let's look. We have a mag constant magnetic field, which is to the right in both pictures. And there is an angle, theta, which is right here. And this angle is 75 degrees. <coughs> We know the rectangular loop has sides A and 2A. And we know, um, actually we don't need theta, I forgot, we'll leave theta out of it. Theta is just theta. We know the magnetic field is 150 millitesla. And what we're trying to find is the current necessary in the wire to keep this um, loop where it is. Travis? Um, if you were going to label the 2A and A, wouldn't it, the A have to be on the front view? Because if you're looking straight down, it's not that. Just giving the, the uh, I guess, sure. <laughs> I guess the 2A would be from here to here, technically. It's just, it's good. we're going to get crowded down here, so I agree with you, but that's the way I'm going to do it. I got you. Okay, so now we have to figure out the direction and the magnitude of the current. Okay, we have a couple of choices. Uh, well, actually, let's, let's start by looking at it from this view. You should be able to see that there is a force of gravity down in this view. And the magnetic force on this current carrying wire needs to prevent that from pulling it down. So there is a current in this wire, which is either going uh, down or up in this wire, and a current in this wire right here, which is either going down or up. And we need to decide which one it is. Now, the current going through this wire is it going to cause any torque around this hinge? No. no. So the current through, and I guess I'll label them wire one, wire two, wire three, and wire four. Note that force of wire one is irrelevant, oops, even, because the torque caused by force one is going to be equal to zero because the lever arm for force one is equal to zero. Now, what about the force for wire two, for example? 
the current is either to the left or to the right for wire two. So that makes the force for wire two, if the current's to the right, walk me through the direction for the force. Now, what's interesting about it is it's, you need to think about it in both views. Because in the top view, it would be to the right. But in this bottom view, it would actually be down and to the right. So it's not actually in the exact same direction as the magnetic field. So if we take our fingers and we point them in the direction of the current, the magnetic field would cause that force to be out of the board in the front view or down in the top view. Right? So we could have a magnetic force going this way if the current is going that way on wire two. What would the direction of the force be then on wire four, the magnetic force? Sierra? Would be opposite of the direction from wire two because it's going to be going, the current's going to go in the opposite direction and therefore we're going to get into the page which is actually going to be this way. So notice that the magnetic force for wire four is in the opposite direction and actually neither of those are gonna cause a torque because they both end up canceling one another out. So wires two and four, the torque due to two and the torque due to four cancel. So the only wire we're concerned about is wire three. And what does the direction of the magnetic force need to be in the front view in order to suspend this on the hinge? Nick? What's the direction of the magnetic force? In order to keep this whole thing from falling down. I'm not asking for any, you're, you're starting to do the right hand rule, that's not what I'm asking. We're starting with what's the direction of the magnetic force? Who can answer that question? Because it has nothing to do with the right hand rule at this point, Travis. It needs to be up, right? We know the magnetic force on wire three needs to be up. So now we can figure out the direction of the current. The current is either going to be into or out of the board in this view. The force needs to be up. So the thumb needs to point up. Our fingers need to curl to the right, which means they need to have curled from here to get to, to your right. So the current in this view needs to be out of the board. What then is the direction of the current in wire three in the top view, Tyler? Down. Down. So notice that the current in this wire needs to be, uh, we'll call it a clockwise from above as we're viewing. So we have figured out the direction. Eventually we're gonna figure out the torque. Before we do that, let's start by figuring out the magnetic force in wire three. That's really what we need to figure out. What's the equation for the magnetic force in wire three? Sarah Jane Jones? Uh, QV cross B. QV cross B is not the equation we're gonna use for the force in this particular case. Why not, Emily? Because it's a strange charge, it's like the current. It's the, this is the one we use for a single charge. We have a, a uh, series of charges, so we're instead going to use what, Emily? I L cross B. I L cross B. So it's just the difference between having a single charge versus having uh, a current, a current carrying wire. So we're gonna use, we've already figured out the direction, so let's just use I L B sine theta. Uh, the current, so what we're trying to find, the length is of wire three is two A times a magnetic field times a sine of what is this the angle? That's the angle between two things. Or instead of what and what? Uh, is it yeah? Uh, the current and the magnetic field. Uh, technically, though, the L, the length of the current and the length, are generally in the same direction. Always in the same direction. Uh, so, what is that angle in this particular case? Uh, so it's the angle between the yeah. current and so the magnetic field. 90. 90 degrees. Notice that no matter what our angle is for with our hinge, that, that current, the angle between the current and the magnetic field is always going to be 90 degrees. So we figured out that the magnetic force due to wire three is two times the current times A times B. 
Well, now we need to talk about the net torque. Yeah, let's stop. The net torque around our axis of rotation, which is the hinge, is going to be equal to. Now we're only going to have two, technically two torques. We're going to have the torque due to the magnetic force in wire three, and we're going to have the torque due to the force of gravity. Positives and negatives, please. Um, flat. Um, well, the torque to the gravity is going to be negative. How do you know that? Because uh, the current is gone. Uh, it doesn't have to do with the way of the current. Current has to do with um, the direction of the force, which then has to do with the direction of the torque. But I want to know why you get a negative for the torque due to the force of gravity and positive for the torque due to the magnetic force. Somehow, yeah. So get busy travel from the hinge down the lever arm. It's a different right hand rule. We start the axis of rotation, go down the lever arm. You curl down for the force of gravity. For the force of gravity, curl in the direction of the force of gravity. Our thumb points into the page, into the board, which we've defined as negative. For the magnetic force, we start at the axis of rotation. We curl our fingers with the magnetic force. Our thumb is out of the board, and that is positive. Okay, the net torque bill is always equal to. No, that would be torque itself. We're talking net torque. It is equal to the current. I'm sorry, not current. What's what does I stand for? Class. Of a number of inertia times the angular acceleration. The angular acceleration in this particular case is zero. So we get the torque due to magnetic force three is equal to the torque due to the force of gravity. Equation for torque. Tim. Instead of using R cross product F, we're going to use R F sine theta, just because uh, we've already figured out the direction. So we'll just use R F sine theta. Now. For each of these, this is going to be the lever arm for wire three. This is going to be the magnetic force for wire three, and this will be the sign for wire three. This is the um, lever arm for the force of gravity, this is the force of gravity, and this is theta for the force of gravity. If you look at this, let's work from left to right. Um, the lever arm for Magnetic force through Newton is what? Um, is it A? It is A, because it's the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. We already figured out the value for the force due to magnetic uh, wire 3 here, which is going to be 2 times current times A times magnetic field times the sine of. Now, we don't have this angle, but this angle is going to be defined as the angle between the lever arm and the wire. So that would be that angle right there. So it's the angle between the lever arm and the magnetic force. That's equal to lever arm for the force of gravity. Mike? Uh, Lever arm force of gravity two. Meg, can you help now? Um, Grab some issues in the front row. We'll go to the back, Sierra. It is half of A because it's the distance from here to here, which is going to be half of that side. So A over two. The force of gravity is just the mass of the whole thing times the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of theta for the force of gravity, which is going to be this angle here. Are the angles for the force of gravity <coughs> torque equation and the angle for the magnetic force for wire three class are they the same? No. 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 However. Go ahead, Travis. Sign values. Therefore, who could say what? Everyone brought. Everyone brought sign theta to the party. All right.
Acceleration of gravity uh, divided by 4ab. Now, what, what's interesting about this is we don't have the mass. You cancel the end's Oh. We don't have the mass, but we have the mass per unit length. Somebody give me a solution. It's here. Okay, so we know mu is equal to the mass per unit length. So we have mass in this equation, what's the overall length? 2a plus 2a plus a plus a, which is 6a. In other words, we know the mass is equal to 6 times a times mu, which conveniently is the uh, symbol for linear mass density in this particular case. So we have, we can substitute in 6a times mu times g divided by 4a times the magnetic field. a cancels out, we get a 2 over, or a 3 over 2. The current is equal to 3 mu g over 2b. And of note here, a couple of things that don't matter. One would be theta. It doesn't matter what the angle is, as long as we have the correct current, it will stay in place. Another thing that doesn't matter is the actual value of A, as long as it has a shape where uh, one of the sides is twice the other. It works out. So with numbers here, 3 times mu, which is 20, but that's in grams, so 0 0.02 times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8, positive, of course, divided by 2 times the magnetic field, which is in millitesla, 0 0.150. What is the current necessary to run through the wire? amps, and we should give the direction clockwise from above. Good. Yeah. Did we have an equation last time that's like torque equals I A cross B? Yep, you actually could have used that in this problem. Uh, you would have, that would be, we could substitute, if you look, that would be I A times B. That actually gives you exactly this right here. So that doesn't matter what the axis is? It does not matter what the axis of rotation is. That it, it actually, if you look, this is current times the area, which is A times 2A times the magnetic field. That's exactly what we have here. Um, times the sine of the angle, if you remember. Uh, we could have gone through and done that, done it that way, but I prefer to review actually going through the torque. But that would be uh, definitely a way you could go through and do it. 